here we go. That's fabulous. So I want to welcome everybody to today's meeting of the Jones uh, Library Building Committee. We're operating under authority granted by the state legislature and the governor, which allows us to meet virtually through March of 2023. Um, and we are being uh, we are being recorded, and the recording will be posted um, in the appropriate and usual way uh, to the town's website. So I just want to make sure that everybody is, can uh, speak and be heard. So if you'd signify when I ask you your presence, Sharon. Here. Hey, thank you. Christine. Here. Thank you. Sean. Here. Alex. Here. Paul Bockelman. Present. Thank you. And Austin is present. And we are joined by our two fabulous colleagues from, from Collier's. Okay, so the first order of business are the approval of minutes from July 5th. We do not have them yet, so that'll have to be for next time. That's what I said. The second order of business will be the approval of minutes. Okay, uh, financial update. Sean, do you have anything for us? Yeah, I've got a few items. Um, so one, uh, we're continuing our dialogue with find going Alexander on the contract. I know that's a uh, uh, recurring theme, but um, it's really just focused on getting these sort of specialty design fields in place. So Craig's doing a lot of work to sort of get that complete. So thank Craig for all the back and forth he's doing to get that wrapped up. Um, and we want to pay fine gold, but we can't really pay them until we get a contract in place. Um, so there's, you know, there's urgency on both sides to get that done. Um, uh, the cost and Craig, sorry if I take some of your thunder. Uh, the cost estimating meeting that we were going to have next week that's been pushed off a, a week. Um, just there's some uh, some time uh, more time needed by the cost estimator, so that's been pushed off an additional week. So I won't be able to attend that meeting. Um, if there's anybody else who wants to go in my place, I think Craig said you know we can have somebody there, but it's not required. Um, so if there's anybody else who wants to go, uh, the, not this next week, but the week after or sorry, not this week, but next week, um, let Craig know. Um, I did give a presentation to the finance committee on the four building projects. Um, if anybody's interested in that, you know, it's not the most optimistic presentation, but essentially just things we've all talked about in terms of the, the changing um, economic realities, but we did update the finance committee on that. And then the last thing is we do have, a, I believe a June invoice. I don't think we've approved that yet, unless I'm missing a date so I can um, bring that up for the committee to consider. Great, thank you, Sean. All right, so this is the June invoice, same amount as previous months. This will be the fifth month that we've paid for. And you can see we're about 50% or so through the uh, design phase. All right. Okay, is there a motion to approve the payment of this invoice? I'll make sure. a motion. Second. All right, terrific. Any discussion about the invoice, which just disappeared? Do you want me to bring it back up if it's no, any questions? No, 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 no. I know you there... can't see people when, uh, when it's up, so. No, I appreciate you doing that, unless there are any questions. Any questions? Okay, yes, I'm just gonna... I have oh, a go quick ahead. question. Sure. Um, so Craig, are we all, are we on track in terms of um, our contract with you all and in terms of leading up to um, leading up to the bid phase or the, the current calendar, are we on track? Um, I see we're about 50% through design phase. So um, just wondering how that's, how we're doing in terms of, of, of our contract with you and building up to that. So I don't have any reason to believe that we're not sort of on track, but I don't, I have not looked at it. So I okay. will um, double check and, uh, and let you know. Okay, thank you. Sorry. No, thank you. Okay, so I uh, ask you whether you vote to approve the payment of the invoice, the recommended payment of the invoice, Sharon? Yes. Christine? Yes. Sean? Yes. Alex? Yes. Paul Bockelman? Yes. Xander? Yes. And George? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sean, anything else? Nope, that is it. Okay. Any questions about any of the financial issues? 
Uh, okay. Austin, I don't have a question, but um, maybe I'd like to report something that Sean and I talked about, and that was last meeting, I had presented that financial analysis, the project finance report. Um, and Sean, and if it's okay with uh, the committee, I'd like to present that once a month. So Great. the next one would be the, you know, the first meeting in um, August. That sounds great. Sean, does that work for you? Yeah, no, I think that makes a lot of sense. It's not changing a lot right now. I mean, there may be a point in time where we want to do it more frequently, but I think once a month is, is good timing. Great. Okay. Anything else about finances? All right, thanks. The next item is a report from Colliers. And I just want to say um, uh, before Colliers reports on, at least for me, how grateful I am for the work that Colliers is, has, um, has done. Craig is amazingly responsive. Uh, he's so responsive, he sometimes answers questions before they're asked, but his responses are prompt, thorough, and very helpful. So very grateful for the work that you are all doing. Thank you very much, Austin. All right, you're on. All right, so for the um, updates, so project schedule, so we are still in the tail end of schematic design, as Sean mentioned. Uh, we are in that cost estimating portion of the phase. Um, we, just a reminder, we have, we have two cost estimates coming in, one from the design team and one from a cost estimator that was hired directly by the town. Um, then we'll reconcile once with those are both in hand. We have one now, the other one is expected at the end of the day tomorrow. Um, once we have those, we'll begin reconciling them and we have a meeting scheduled, Sean mentioned it, um, August 3rd, um, and that'll be remote. Uh, the design team will be there, their cost estimator. My team will be there, Will and I will be there um, with our cost, with the town's cost estimator. And then if someone from the town wanted to be present for it, that they're more than welcome. Um, let's see what else we got. So design update. Um, so right now the design team is in a little bit of a holding pattern. Uh, so they that schematic design package was finished July 1st, but until we have the cost at, cost known, um, there's not a whole lot that they're proceeding. They're, they may be proceeding with some um, routine things, but the next big step is giving them approval to move in design development. And so that, that'll be done once we have uh, the costs in hand. We have a, um, a meeting with MBLC um, and then once all the everything, everyone is satisfied that we are in a good place to move forward with the scope and the cost, then we will. Um, I think we talked about last time if those costs come in high, which you know there's a a, a good chance that they will given the market conditions, um, we will in um, embark on a value engineering exercise and present to the building committee um, the reconciled costs as well as a list of ideas where we can re potentially reduce costs um, for you to consider. Um, I think um, speaking with Christine um, offline, we talked about um, you know, who, you know, where those um, cost reduction efforts may fall. Some of them, and I think when we looked at the calendar, the JLBC will be seeing that information first before the next design subcommittee. But some of those cost reduction strategies may you may want to defer or send down to the design subcommittee for review and, and um, consideration. So it will be a process where the information is presented, um, considered, and then and then uh, decided upon. Any questions about that process? Xander, I thought I saw your hand go up just a little while ago, so I just want to. Yeah, thank you. Um, the uh, I wanted to just double check, Craig, uh, the August 6 cost reconciliation meeting. Um, is that open to the public and uh, are materials disclosed ahead of time or is that something that uh, people will be digesting these facts on the fly in the meeting itself? It's a great question, Xander. Um, so to answer your first question, uh, no, it would not be open to the public. This would be a, a a closed meeting between your consultants, um, maybe with one representative of the town. Um, and then the, the second question about 
sharing the information in advance. Um, so the, the, the town or the, the library has commissioned these two cost estimates. And so the information is rightfully yours. However, um, it is still in somewhat of a rough state. And so it would be my recommendation that we not um, share that those cost estimates until they've been reconciled. So once they've been reviewed, scrutinized, and reconciled, then they're a little more real. Uh, and the reason why I, I that's my recommendation is because the cost estimators, while they are uh, very good at what they do, um, they are new to this project. And so um, there may be some big things in there that shouldn't be, or some big things that are missing that, that should be present. And so that'll be Collier's and the design team's responsibility to sort of clean that up before we turn it over to you and the public. And I just want to make sure, Xander, if I could just uh, get Paul to weigh in on that. Paul, is that, uh, does that sound appropriate to you? Yeah, I mean, what Craig said, sure. Yeah, great, just want to make sure. Xander, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, just to um, follow up with someone unfamiliar with this process, um, when you say there are things that are, that might be in there that certainly shouldn't be or things that aren't, um, can you give an example of where you've seen that in similar processes uh, so folks have an understanding of, of what we're talking about? Certainly. So uh, one of the things that we were just, uh, Will and I were on a call with the design team earlier today, um, one of the first things we look at is the the square footage. Um, so the design team has in their design a certain size of the building. Uh, the cost estimators typically do not take that at face value. Rather, they go and they do their own what we call a takeoff, where you measure the whole building and determine the area. Um, so if you ask three different people to do that exercise, you may come up with three different results. So what we will do is we will look at um, the areas that the cost estimators are assuming based on their takeoffs and see how well that corresponds to um, what the design team has built into their model. And they have the model, so they know best um, the areas. And the reason why that's sort of the first thing we do is because uh, the building area is a, a, um, one of the biggest contributing factors to cost. Um, so if it's all off by a thousand square feet, it might not seem like a lot, but uh, at, at today's construction costs, that, that could be a um, million dollars. Xander, is that helpful? That's extremely helpful. Thank you. As okay. someone who lived um, in a city until very recently, a thousand square feet is a huge deal. <laughs> um, the and thank you to to your whole team um, and you know you and Will for always staying so late. I always see your offices are empty behind you, and I appreciate that you're staying in the minute. <laughs> uh, the thank you. Um, glad to help when we can. But these are just um, graphics. Oh, really? I thought you were just yeah. sitting in the exact same place. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Alex. Yeah, I just have a, I guess, a procedural question. I heard you say, Craig, that um, this committee will see the value engineering, the reconciled uh, estimate with the value engineering ideas before design committee does. And it sounded like that was by virtue of sort of preset meetings versus what the process should actually be. So I guess I'm putting out to the group, should it go to design first? And if so, like, should we schedule a meeting and make that happen rather than being sort of tied to this preset meeting schedule? Everyone on the design committee is on the Jones Library Building Committee. And what I understood Craig to say was that Craig would present it to the committee and then the committee would raise questions or chew on it and and refer it, so to speak, for the further consideration of the, the design committee. That sounds a, like a plausible possibility, but maybe not. Sean. Um, so just building off what Alex said, Craig, will you look to the committee for thumbs up, thumbs down on the different ideas? Um, on the on the VE ideas, like if there's five of them, we look to see for us to vote on. Yeah, we want to do three of them um, to give the designers that direction moving forward. Or how will that process play out? Um, yeah, Sean, you've got it exactly right. So the the ideas will be generated largely in that um, reconciliation meeting, sort of at the tail end of it, or possibly by email or um, a conference call afterwards. 
Um, and then the cost estimators will do like a mini cost estimating exercise. And then we'll be presenting to um, the library building committee. Um, here's an idea and here's how much we think it will reduce the cost. And then yes, we would be looking for direction before the design team takes any action on those ideas. We would look for direction from, uh, from you folks. And depending on what they are, it may take a while to get to that direction. Absolutely. Uh, right. So there may be a the design committee can look at it. There might be some conversation in the outreach committee, making the information available to the public, but we won't know that until we see what the, we won't really have a sense of that until we see what, where we are and what the ideas are. Okay. Exactly. Right. I, I was just clarifying what I heard as it coming to us first because of meeting schedules versus it was the right place to start. So if it's the right place to start, that's great. I was just, that's what I was right. talking about. And, and sorry, Alex, um, if, if uh, the way I presented it was a little confusing, it was more, what I was trying to say was um, the library building committee meeting will be the next, will be the first meeting where the information is available. And so, yes, it is a natural place uh, to, 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 uh, to talk. Great. 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 And the right place. Great. Other questions at this point for Craig. All right, Craig, you have other things for us? Um, only to apologize that I still have not uh, given a report to Sharon about the uh, the interim locations that, that um, she has been working hard to collect and feed to me. So uh, coming soon, I promise. Okay. Okay, other any other questions or issues that anybody wants to raise at this point with Colliers? Okay, thank you, Craig. So subcommittee reports. First, the design committee, Christine. Hello. Uh, so we had a meeting on the 15th and we went through another uh, about 150 comments. Um, and again, a shout out to the outreach committee. This, you know, it's great the way that they're coming to us. And um, I don't know, is someone wants to share their screen to show them. Uh, Austin, you say, how do we want to go over these? So we have another batch yep. to sort of get everybody to weigh in on. And again, it's the same columns we've been looking at. There's uh, column D, the white one that's action uh, responses that it's already in the works. It's kind of the comment. And then there's green E, which is it's uh, we're agreeing and we're sending off for the designers to chew on a little bit and F, which is the maybe, and we don't have too many of those, maybe five that are to be discussed amongst our group, and we can hit those first off. Um, and then there's G, which is the red column that's, we disagree, it, it's either the ship has sailed or, you know, due to experts like our director for library, it just won't work, or we know that um, it won't work for the design we have, but appreciate the comments nonetheless. So um, normally we uh, just really look at the maybes and the disagrees. Um, I think the disagrees are pretty straightforward. We need to discuss the maybes, but um, I'm also open to whether or not people want to discuss row E, the we agree, only because we're at a point, and Craig, if you can weigh in or Sharon on this, you know, we're sending these to designer. Is it too late? We don't want to be asking them for something that's going to mess with their procedure and cost more money or effort. So we want to be careful or we're getting more careful as we're, you know, getting into DD, what are we sending to our designers and telling them? So, um, and, and anyone, if you have any questions on this group of yellow 715 comments, please, you know, raise your hand and bring that specific comment up. Craig. Um, thank you, Austin. Uh, Christine's exactly right. Uh, from my perspective, um, you, I'm sure everyone here recalls, but in case someone from the public is tuning in and, and was not in the earlier uh, library building committee meetings, um, we had identified sort of a, a period of time where public comment would be most impactful. Uh, and that was as we collected it through schematic design, which now we're at, at the tail end of that. Um, going into design development, um, certain comments might not um, impact the eventual product 
Um, and so those comments would be things having to do with the building massing, um, to a certain extent, the layout, um, large moves that the design team has now baked in um, to their product. Um, there are still opportunities to collect public comment. And some of those we've talked about in the past would be um, color palettes, which is you know mm -hmm. uh, interior, exterior colors of things, uh, the landscape, which is uh, constructed very last at the end of the project. And to a certain extent, uh, the building is not dependent on it. Um, so things of those nature, uh, exterior colors, uh, look and feel on the interior. Um, so those are the things that um, if the public continues to comment, those are the ones that will have the most weight, and most impact. Um, whereas comments on, you know, I, I would like the library to be taller, shorter, um, larger, smaller, those ones we can still receive, but then they'll be uh, almost, um, the response will be almost perfunctory that, you know, we've passed that point in the design. Great. So, uh, Sharon, do you want to say anything about this? You want to lead us through and point us to particular uh, things, please? Sure. Uh, so I'm thinking we start with the maybes and then we do right. the disagrees. And then if if others want to go back to anything in column E or D, that's great, too. Great. So starting with comment number 332, um, we felt that this is not applicable to the designer, some adult books near the children's section. Mm -hmm. Okay, going down to comment 353. I'm glad to see the large west windows have been scaled down. How can passive solar be incorporated into the Jones? Um, we thought that would be discussed during design development. Comment 354, same thing to be discussed. Uh, concerns about the roof holding up during the winter. Uh, having a snack corner uh, in the teen room, uh, it's not something that the that needs to go to the designer. Uh, a deck or a porch off of the teen room, uh, we can look at that during design development. Comment 149, dual screens. Um, uh, that is not for the designers. That'll be um, based on us and our IT budget. And that's the end of the maybes. So any questions or thoughts about the maybes? Okay, Sharon. Uh, for the disagree column, uh, comment number 303, uh, the children's uh, see-through floor or a buried dinosaur. I love that idea, but no. Um, a rooftop garden, uh, uh, we're disagreeing with. A bed, we're disagreeing with. Um, the pr proposed facade of the addition is too heavy. We disagreed with that. Uh, don't expand at all, we're disagreeing with that. Uh, looking at the design of the West Somerville Branch Library, uh, not as imposing as the schematic design for the Jones, we disagreed. Um, thinner brick, we disagreed on that. Multiple small rooms in, in the teen space, we're disagreeing with that. Animals and alpaca, as much as I love alpacas, no. <laughs> uh, water elements in libraries, not a good idea. A pool, no. Ping pong, no. Although I, these are fabulous ideas. Uh, teen separate space with separate entrance. It will be a separate space and there will be an entrance, but it won't be a separate exterior entrance. Everybody comes in through the same front door. Everybody leaves through the same front door. Uh, stairway on edges of building versus the middle. Uh, we're disagreeing on that. Metal, the weight. Uh, yeah, no, we're disagreeing on that. The Civil War tablets. Uh, we're disagreeing with have we want to have a designated gallery. 
the cafe outside, we're, dis- we're not going to be providing food, but people are always welcome to bring their own food and eat outside. Uh, the entryway should remain as is. Uh, we can't do that. We have to make it handicapped accessible. Uh, imitating the shape of the old building, we disagree with that comment. Don't expand, we disagree. Uh, lots of light, but not so much glass inside. We're disagreeing with that. Uh, Neo brutalesque, we're disagreeing with that. <laughs> Uh, a tree swing to read in as much as I love a tree swing. No, we're going to pass on that. Uh, a lot. We had a nice conversation about this, the long, beautiful table for communal reading. Um, you know, we can all picture a, a, a very classic historic public library or academic library where everybody sits at the same table. Um, but we, we decided against this. Um, primarily because people tend to sit at their own tables. They just want, they tend to just want to be alone. So we're going with the disagree. Expanding audiobook access, we're disagreeing with that too for now, basically because so much of, uh, uh, of library um, information is, is streaming and, and that's where everything is headed. But we don't know what will happen in the future. We're disagreeing on the communal table. We're disagreeing on plants in general. Um, you know, not that we don't we we don't we love plants. The problem is you need somebody to take care of it, and you really need to pay somebody to take care of that. A soda stream in the tea, teen room, no. Comfy couches, we won't be doing that in the teen room. Uh, our our teen room in the library will be for everybody. Uh, brick walls, I, I don't think there are any plans for brick walls within the library. Uh, we decided against uh, fake fires in the fireplaces just because it's another thing to break. So that's everything. Great. Thank you, Sharon. Okay. okay. Um, so just to say, um, Austin, we have three that are in the maybes that say to be discussed. And how would you like to handle those? We got a couple of questions first, Christine, and yeah, then okay. we'll, we'll come back if that's okay. Uh, uh, I got Alex and then Xander. Alex, I think Xander's hand was up first, so I'll I'll wait for Xander. I mean, we could just go in order of parts of my name. So why don't you go first, Alex? Why don't one of you actually ask your question? <laughs> Fine, I'll go first. Um, okay, great. So. One, um, I just, on some of these, I can either do it publicly here or Sharon, I can do it with you, but um, on areas where we've been disagreeing, when I've been updating the public document, I'm just trying to add a little information about why we're disagreeing. And so I'm happy to circle back around with you um, because I couldn't attend your meeting and you guys couldn't record it because it had to be in person. So we can do that at a different time, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing, Thing. Um, so there are certain comments, and for example, comment 335, um, current proposed facade of addition is too heavy-handed, heavy materials, heavy roof massing lighten up. And there are a couple of comments in there about softer curvature, and so not to get into the outreach subcommittee's report, but um, we're, I, I guess I'm tempted to leave those uh, not in the disagree column because I think we're going to be leading some exterior walks around the building because talking to people one-on-one -on -one and having them really tell us what they mean, I think, uh, is going to be more effective because I don't know what people mean by this. And so I just, I hate to, I hate to just sort of be like, we disagree with you. So I, anything that's sort of talking about the way the exterior looks, I'd like to sort of table those for after we're doing these walking tours, um, if that makes sense to the group. Because then maybe we can get a little more specific and then figure out whether we're, we are or can address it. So I take it that uh, just to, for myself, there's nothing, if we say we disagree now, there's nothing to say that we can't come back and say we've changed our mind. But, um, so I don't think there's a huge amount at stake whether we have it in the disagree column right now, because we can always come back and say, you know, we changed, we changed our mind. But if you would be more comfortable 
and uh, we'll put it in the maybe column. My only logic is I think that if people aren't watching our meetings and they come into the public document and you disagree, they may think the conversation's over and maybe they don't terrific. Maybe they don't come and talk to me. <laughs> I want them to come talk to me. Okay, terrific. <laughs> Great. Anything else, Alex? Yeah. Um, the other thing, do, 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 where was it? Dunk, dunk, dunk. Cool ping pong. Um, there were also like the soda stream, for example, like, I mean, to me, that's like, I don't even know why we're talking about it. So I, teens want a soda stream. That's up to, you know, Cecilia and the teens. I think, I don't know, like, I think that's not a built-in architectural design thing. So again, it's just that came directly from teens. And again, I'm just trying to be mindful of like, I'd rather put that in, in the like NA designer and then let the teens work it out with the teen the head of team services unless Sharon feels strongly otherwise that just felt like a can you tell me what comment it is just so I can find it yeah it is uh 203 203 um yeah 130 on your report 203 in the comment number oh there we go I just want to make sure I understand this. The library director spoke pretty directly against this when we discussed it in the committee. Okay. So and I, yeah, it wasn't there. <laughs> I don't know. I know. I know. But I, I'm. Yeah. I'm not criticizing you. I'm simply saying that I want to. I'm. I'm a little confused, and I'm confused because the library director spoke pretty strongly against it. So I don't know whether the library director now wants to say it's really. Uh, this is really an open conversation uh and if she does that's fine but uh that that was not where we were when we were in the design committee yeah no so so a soda stream implies a a, a constant budget uh thing uh and having to clean up after it uh so i wouldn't say I, I am happy to sit down with Cecilia and the teens and, and talk about that. Um, right now, my instinct says no. Um, I, but I do agree with you, Alex, about, you know, one of the things, several of these things are more about like programming. I would, I would consider this a programming thing and it's not exactly. that yeah. the designers don't care whether or not we purchase a soda stream. Okay. So again, for purpose of what we're doing, I don't think this is in the maybe column. It's it's not it's not applicable. It's just not. It, and if sometime later the library wants to do a soda screen, sodas, I mean, you can do it. Yeah. No, and this falls into the category of me getting like now I have the details from you, so now I feel like I can. I feel like if a teen goes back and sees it, then they understand. You know what I mean? For me, I'm just coming at. The public comes to this, they're not at this meeting, or they weren't able to attend the meeting because it was an in-person meeting and just giving people understanding of why decisions are made. Um, and the only other thing was the teen, uh, there was the language about having an inviting space for BIPOC teens that said disagree, which I'm pretty sure that's, I'm pretty sure we don't disagree with that. I just wasn't sure. I don't know how that was. That was one so, that didn't get follow up with you on. I don't know. <laughs> so, so again, and maybe the comment is unclear. Uh, I don't know if this comment was going at the the town's desire to have a teen BIPOC center. So that's what we're disagreeing with, only because that's not the purpose of the library's teen space. So that's why we yep. disagreed. Great. That's all I need. That's what I was trying to clarify. Was Thank not you. that we didn't want a welcoming place, but that it, we're not replacing the the town's. Great, thank right. you, perfect. All right, Xander. Yeah, um, 
I don't know how to phrase this as a question, but there's a, a tension that I felt going through these comments, um, specifically around the idea that uh, your comments about long tables are these lovely romanticized ideas, but that people primarily want to be alone. Um, juxtaposed to the teens, uh, <laughs> several comments of them requesting sort of individualized space, whether that's comfy couches or spaces um, or like whatever. And there seems to be a tension there of we want to create individualized space, but we don't trust teens to have individualized space. Uh, it's definitely not meant just for teens. Um, the single chairs get used more than couches do. And so if you spend the money and the square footage, uh, limited money and limited square footage on a, on a couch or even just a love seat, and primarily only one person is going to sit there, it just doesn't make sense to do that. So buy two individual chairs. This has nothing to do with teens. This is just libraries in general. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, Thank you. And also, I really wish we had the dinosaur floor. I know. <laughs> okay. So Christine, uh, you were you wanted to raise a couple of other issues. Um, I do. So um, we have. So. Are we to, uh, are we gonna vote or do we just all agree how are we gonna send these? And there are still a few in the maybe column, um, which do we wanna move them out of the maybe column or just send them to the designer that way? So there were a few comments that you suggested we wanted to discuss. There's three of them. Uh, and so maybe, Maybe it'd be good now to raise them, to draw people's attention to them, and let's discuss them. Okay. Um, so the first one was 353. Right, uh, thank you. I'm glad to see the large <clears throat> west windows have been scaled down. How can passive solar be incorporated into the Jones? And I know we don't have our designers here, but I'm hoping, Craig, maybe you can give us, because you weren't at that meeting. Um, when we went over these, that you can give us a little nudge either way of how to handle these. Craig? So that's, um, I unfortunately, I do not have any insight, additional insight to add to this one. Um, I'm not totally clear on the size of the windows before versus now, uh, but I do believe in general, I do believe Feingold Alexander is um, relying on passive solar um, to a certain extent being included in the design, um, window shading to control um, unwanted heat gain, but you know skylights to allow for um, daylighting. So sorry, there's not a whole lot of information there. So would you say we could safely move that to the already in the works column? that they're looking at passive solar? I think so. So um, I think I think so. So we're not putting it in the green, like it's extra work. We're saying like they're already looking, it's net zero and solar and all that. Right, and so maybe in this one, um, we can put a little note, uh, Feingold Alexander, please confirm. Okay, Great. we'll put it in Great. the already in the works and need designer confirmation. Yeah. Great. If someone could do that. Thank you. So the next one is the next line down, 354. There are concerns about the roof design holding up in winter over the years. It has Charles, which will hold ice as it expands and contracts, damaging the roof and creating leaks. A durable New England roof should have its highest point in the center with good steep angles down from there and no Charles, which collect ice and water, which I can understand why this comment, you know, with the current library, why people would be concerned. Um, again, Craig, I, I is like, we're moving out of, we're out of SD and we're in DD. I assume there's not gonna be big changes in the roof lines at this point. Craig. 
Craig, you just froze on us. Oh, sorry. My... Oh, I can hear you. Okay. I see. Now we can't hear you. You can't hear me at all. Craig, we you're not we're not we're not able to hear you. Right. So because you're in the very same space with Will, if you would just move over into his <laughs> box, we could that that would help. Craig, are you now able to speak? Um, how about now? It's same thing. It's in and out. Maybe come back. Can we come back? On? You can do that. I have a couple other issues that I don't think involve you, at, which I can bring up now while you try to sort yourself out. Okay. So hold on, Christine, before you go, Xander, you have your hand up. Yeah, I was just gonna say, with those last two that Christine brought up, um, if I understand this correctly, that if if they're put in the action response agree, right, then like effectively we as the JLBC are asking the designers to actively work on that, right? If it goes in the green, yes. Cool, so with both of those things, um, if we're not sure that they're working on passive solar, but that is something important to this committee, if we're not sure if the roof has, they're considering durability, God, I hope they are. But uh, if they're, you know, it sounds like we care about there being a roof on our building um, that's gonna hold up in New England snow, then is there, should we not just put those in the green so that we are actively asking the design team to incorporate them? Well, so we haven't heard Craig's answer on the second one yet, but the first one he said, put it in the white because he knows they are working on passive solar elements, but we just want to confirm it. What I heard was he believes that they might be, we want them to 100% be. I've heard them say they are. So, so I, 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 I don't think. Craig, we... yeah. But either way, the designers will look at the white and the green, but I hear what you're saying. It, when Craig comes back, he can tell us what he thinks about the second one, because I'm not sure. So I, I just want to say the following. I, I think that the questions that were raised are appropriate and that we should just raise them with the, the, the designer. And yeah. you should, I don't, whether you put it in the yellow or the green, you want to ask FAA, yeah. what are you doing about passive solar? And what are your thoughts about this comment about the roof? And I think that's what we, that's what we're asking. That's what we want them to do. So there's then I think the last, the third one is just line 390, which is uh, teens, a deck or porch off the teen room, which Sharon might be able to give us a little thoughts on what that means. Sharon. So, so I, 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 I think there, there's a lovely desire to have an outdoor space attached to the teen room. Um, but where it is located right now on the first floor, it, it's just not, it's not possible that I can see. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's an opportunity possibly to talk with the designers during design development. There is a there's an an emergency exit off of the te off of that room, um, but it's small. It's an emergency exit, so it's not like there's a deck, um, and I don't think there could be a deck because the driveway is right there. George, um, I just wanted to add to that. It's also that area is also on the historic 1928 structure, so you likely would not be able to make any exterior changes to put a deck there. I just want to also remind Sharon, you also had talked about um, supervision of that space. Like, is it open all the time or is it just for when they're having special events? Uh huh. <laughs> so, again, I mean, if it's just an emergency exit like it is now, there's nothing there's nothing to supervise. It's. I, I don't know what else to say. I, I would need the architect's input. I wonder if uh, anybody on the committee wants to weigh in on whether they think putting a deck is the um, a thing that we that we want to do. 
Okay. No, there's no opinion about the deck. Um, George? I am against the concept. Okay. Xander? Um, I think it is a lovely oh, concept and maybe worth engaging creatively because um, there are a number of outdoor spaces currently, right? Um, like in the current design of the building, whether it's the garden, whether it's the tent out front. Um, and this might be a programming uh, possibility of like how, how, how do we use the outdoor spaces um, to be inviting to two teens, right? And like, is there a way that we can do that? Um, because I, I hear the supervision question, although I do want to re, uh, re-raise the idea that I think there is the question of like, um, do we not trust teens? And if so, is that inviting to them? Um, but yeah, so I think this might be a programming question and being creative on how do we look at the gardens and the other surrounding lands, because um, it doesn't necessarily need to be planks of wood to be an outdoor space for them. Thank you. Alex? Yeah, I want to echo what Xander said. I actually love that idea. And I think about I have a, a college aid student. And as I'm sure you know, being in a college, every college uh, these days has, you know, spaces where kids hang their hammocks. That's like all the rage these days, you know, like putting your hammock up and, and, and reading a book. So I like the idea of thinking creatively about how we use the outside spaces. Um, and, and the more things we do to be inviting to teens, I think the better. And just to just to clarify, this isn't a teen thing. I, I wouldn't trust adults on a deck either. Uh, it is it is a liability issue. I if it were ground floor, I'm with you. Like there's a, a story time garden out uh, out the front uh, space near the children's room. Um, I love that. It's just that the location of the teen room is not on ground level. Um, so it's not lending itself. The design is not lending itself to having an outdoor space that abuts the teen space. But there are lots of outdoor spaces and anybody can use them at any time. So I wonder if we can say uh, we don't agree with this particular proposal, though we are interested in to use the phrase thinking creatively about outdoor spaces that would be attractive to teens. And I would say if there's a possibility of going back to um, to the, the suggestors here um, or a team group, uh, the idea of there being small spaces for them to talk to their friends um, and the use of the gardens and how do we do that um, is a maybe opportunity for synergy, although I hate that word. And let's Correct. not forget, a large portion of Darwin's diaries are complaining about how he doesn't know how to set up a hammock. Paul? I, I agree with Sharon that decks, you know, above the first floor that aren't on the ground floor are a problem, liability-wise. I mean, one piece of advice I give to every college student is there's never a good reason to go on a deck or a roof because that's where bad things happen. Um, so, and I don't think we want to create... Um, attractive nuisances in, that, in a sense where it, where it could be a liability where someone falls off of a deck. So it's just a totally liability, whoever it's for, teens, children, adults, whatever. So I would, I would be advocating very strongly to not do that. But the idea of creating great, cool spaces outside is I'm all for. So is that acceptable now to folks? We'll say we don't agree about the deck. We are interested in uh, the making attractive outdoor spaces uh, for, for teens and for everyone else. Okay, Christine, what else you got? Okay, so um, we have another uh, 200 plus comments um, still on this spreadsheet that uh, we'll move on to at some point. Again, I'm, Craig, are you back with us? I think I'm back, can you hear me? Yes, Yeah, yes. welcome right. back. So, um, and I assume, and I'm sure, Alex Outreach will tell us more later that they're doing all these, you know, great in-person events and still talk to people. But just for process, I'm wondering like, how long are these comments gonna be coming? And Craig, at some point we're gonna have to start sorting harder where some of these comments, thank you, but it's too late. And some of these comments, it's sort of almost 
almost too early to deal with because you know we're not into the inner details of the building at this point so um first what's your take on how the design subgroup should proceed at this point so um my recommendation is um mostly to um educate or inform the community about where we are in the process and you know which comments are those ones that will um that still have the ability to to um, impact the design and which ones that time has passed um i i tried giving a, a quick overview um earlier in this discussion um talking about you know building massing is sort of off the table at this point um but you know paint colors is something that is coming down the road so and there, and there are others there are other comment types um, and categories that um, are still should still be open um, or could still be open so craig what is it the appropriate thing at this point uh to forward to faa uh the the what we've just done what the design committee's recommended to us and what we've just done and they can they can hold on to them as appropriate Yes, and, and that's the message that we've been giving them okay. is these are things that um, the, the building committee and the community would like you to consider. Um, if you can incorporate them, please do. If they're if it's not feasible, we ask them to just give us a, a quick response back. And this one's not feasible because X, Y, Z. Great. So are we ready now to, to decide to forward these on? Or is there any other comment or question anybody wants to make at this point about these? I just have one more point to point out on Christine? column D. On column D between comments, like it, there's others, but between one, uh, 401 and 413, we have a section that's ongoing. And we tried to loop all of those into um, exterior options. So we put them there because, you know, we read them, we, we hear, but it's, it's an ongoing process right now. And I assume, Craig, when you come back uh, in a few weeks with options for us to weigh in cost, that is where we will sort of uh, deal with that. And then we can go back and change this uh, spreadsheet to be just like, I don't know if they agree, but that they, they were dealt with. So, um, Okay. Craig, will we deal with, is that when we're going to pick the external or does it come back to design? Um, I think it, the, the two kind of work together in conjunction. So, you know, certain exterior elements will be presumably too expensive or too costly for us to include into the, in the project. Um, and so that'll be a value judgment, I think, by the design subcommittee with sort of the cost uh, and understanding a better understanding than we have now of the, the costs of the building and sort of what are the potentials and, and opportunities. So when we forward this spreadsheet, if we send it close to the way it is um, now with a few edits on the maybe, um, we just need to make it clear to the designer what that ongoing means um, in the, in, it's not to influence them at all. It, that will be determined later. Um, right. Okay. Okay. Well, I, can, I can deliver that message and when right. I turn this over to them. I can explain what that means to them. That would right. be that would be great. And I'm talking to Craig about this because he was not at our last meeting. So absolutely. So are we ready now to forward this on? So I don't know that we really need a vote. I just ask unanimous consent. If anybody objects, they should object now. Okay, so we will forward it on to the to FAA with Craig's gloss as um, as needed. Christine, anything else from the design subcommittee? Um, just want to circle back uh, for something that we dealt with a month or so ago. The Civil War tablets. I just wanted to ask if anyone has an update on how the Civil War tablet working group is doing. They have we uh, the designer had said they wanted. It some kind of guidance in August about how these are going to be great. Archived. Great, Paul. Yeah, so um, there isn't, a, they won't have an answer in August. I think they, we should assume that they'll be hanging on the walls. That's the safest way to 
look at it. I think that gives us options going forward. Um, and uh, because I don't, there's, it's just not gonna happen in the, in the next two weeks, basically. And I think that the most conservative approach is to say, it's on the ground floor. If they're in the floor, they should be supported. But if they're on the walls, the designers should think about what that, what those walls should look like. Okay, Christine. Awesome. So when we send forward these comments, my suggestion is in the email or whatever, Craig, we also include that assumption and tell the designers at this point Great. to go with, Great. build the walls in a way that they can support these very heavy tablets. Is that what we're saying as a committee? Yes. Okay, well, I will share that information. And I presume, just to clarify, I presume it's the new walls, I know that room as it's currently envisioned has uh, two walls that are existing, existing foundation. The design team said there are two new walls and those are the ones that'll be easiest for them to say, um, detail in a way that can support these heavy elements. So it'll be the new walls that we're asking them to design. With that. Can I say it really depends on, you know, how the rooms are uh, oriented and where all the tablets can be hung. So th they're going to have to tell us, I feel like. Okay. So uh, working forward and backward, these are the areas that we would like to have them. And they'll say, well, these are the areas that have the capacity to hold them. Thank you. Thank you. Chris, uh, Christine, did I see you? Yeah. So just to finish up, that's how I heard them saying it, that they really need to work with the new walls and not the old walls. It would be much too problematic and costly. Um, and the last thing I just want to say, everyone, our next meeting is Friday at 9 a.m. and it will be on Zoom. Thank you, Christine. Alex. Yeah, I just wanted to suggest, so Anika is the point person for the Civil War tablets for this committee. So um, she's obviously been unable to attend these meetings, but I, I would just suggest sending her an email directly to confirm your understanding before we send anything to um, the architects. Great. Sharon, I, please. I'm meeting meet with Anika tomorrow. I'm Great. Great. Terrific. Thank you very much. Okay. So with thanks to the design committee for its terrific work, we'll go on now to the outreach subcommittee. Alex. Um, so we met on July 19th, uh, last Tuesday, um, and just shout out to the group and shout out to everybody because uh, over the course of two months, we collected 2,487 comments from the public, um, which is a pretty good number, I think, in two months. And interestingly, almost a thousand of those come from teens, um, which is really cool to see so much engagement um, happening from teens. Um, we, uh, in our newsletter resumed uh, last, this Sunday went out. Um, in the newsletter that went out three weeks ago, um, we stated that schematic design comments were ending July 1. We again said at this time that they ended July 1 and everything where we were collecting comments was taken down in the library. <clears throat> so I think we very clearly told people that phase is over and to be looking forward to the next phases and we'll be putting things up. Um, tomorrow is the first um, walking, exterior walking tour um, that we're gonna be giving to folks. The idea being uh, with renderings in hand and the building in front of us, instead of a comment right. uh, that I don't know what to do with, we can get some specific details back to everybody in terms of what people want to see in terms of minor changes to the exterior. And then uh, there's also one July 31st, because what else am I going to do on my birthday, but we need a tour at the library at nine in the morning. Um, so those two haven't been super heavily advertised because I want to sort of see how they go. And then if they go the way uh, we hope then we'll uh, sort of get it out there in a, a larger, more public fashion. Um, and in the newsletter, we did put out a request to see if anyone could help us with maybe aerial, doing an aerial video of the tour. Um, the committee had an idea about, you know, doing something sort of like we did for the, um, for the walkthroughs of the other libraries where we could do an aerial tour that's available to people online and sort of have that conversation a different way. Um, that's pretty much it. Our next meeting is August 9th at 4 p.m. 
Great. So first of all, thank you to Alex for, <clears throat> and the outreach committee, but to Alex for this idea of this exterior tours. I think that's absolutely wonderful. And I'd like unanimous consent to wish Alex a happy birthday. Okay, with no objection, as they say. Alex, happy birthday. Okay, any questions, outreach? Okay, and again, thanks to the outreach committee. Uh, there is no correspondence that I know of for the committee to consider. Uh, nothing that I've heard of in the last 48 hours for the committee to act on. So um, next would be public comment. We have uh, now four attendees. If any of the members of the public who are uh, attending via Zoom would like to make a comment, this would be the time. Please signify by raising your hand. Okay, I see no hands raised. And again, thanks to the members of the public for uh, coming. So uh, following the, the Bachman rule, uh, I'd like to say that we're adjourned. And wish everybody, uh, excuse me, before we go, I see Xander's hand is up. Sorry, Sorry, I don't mean to keep everyone. I've just been dying to know, uh, what does your shirt say, Austin? Secrets and what? Uh, let's, let's talk about that offline. Okay, Christine. Yeah, could you just go over what you're thinking of our schedule for the next month? Because I see it says, our next meeting is next Tuesday. Um, and I was just wondering what other meetings we were gonna have in August. And then I knew there was some other specialty meetings. So uh, Sharon, do you wanna say something about this, about this schedule? Sorry, so uh, because we uh, put this meeting off by a week, uh, it basically, so we have two choices. We could not meet next week and we th meet the following week, or I, I just thought we would leave the schedule as it is because it's already all in our calendars, which means we meet next week. And that way uh, it doesn't screw up the outreach committee's uh, meeting schedule. So that's what I was thinking. Uh, and Craig, again, uh, will we, what will we have on the 2nd of August? Um, the only thing that we would have that was not presented today is we will have that financial, the project financial report, not the cost estimate, but just the financial report. Um, so don't know that there would be a ton of content to discuss. So we would have an opportunity to hear from the design subcommittee, which is meeting on Friday, um, next, uh, next Tuesday. But it seems to me that the agenda is not very full. And I'm kind of reluctant to say, let's get together next week uh, when we don't seem to have a huge number of things that we would need to, uh, that we will need to, to talk about. Christine. This is also making me think um, or question Craig, even Friday's design subcommittee meeting, what is it? I know we have an agenda, but I don't see much meat to it. Yes, yeah, so I spoke with uh, Feingold and Alexander earlier today and asked them if there was anything that they were going to present or decisions they were looking for at that meeting, and they said there were none. So what they're doing right now is they're, work, they're developing what's called a work plan, which is kind of their roadmap over the course of design development. So they said that they'll have that to me soon um, so I can compare it to the project schedule and make sure everything lines up. Um, but as far as this Friday's meeting, they, uh, Feingold Alexander does not have anything to present or, um, or any reasons to attend. Okay. So we'll come back to that, Christine, about whether you want to meet Sean. I'm sorry if this was already said, are we not scheduled to meet on the 9th of August? Sharon. And I only ask because I, I, feel like we probably want to meet as soon after that cost estimating meeting yeah, occurs sure. as possible to get that going. Yeah, yeah that's, what, so, that's what she said about the outreach. That would require bumping the outreach committee. Sharon? Yeah, so it, exactly. And and so maybe, maybe that's what we want to do is flip the two calendars. 
Okay, so let's let's do that. Let's move the the Jones Library Building Committee meeting to the ninth. Alex, we'll leave it to you to come up with a proposal for rescheduling the outreach committee. Christine, um, do you want to say anything at this point about whether you want to cancel the design committee? I'm thinking we need to cancel for this Friday, but then I want to ask Craig. So when do you, should it be the twelfth after the ninth, or? you know again sort of what alex brought up earlier like we want you know uh, we here's what i'd like to process is, is yeah. orderly here's what i'd like to propose which is sharon get together with craig and look at all these uh possible meetings and come back with a proposal let's let's say we won't meet the design committee will not design subcommittee will not meet on friday the building committee will not meet on the second we'll next meet on the ninth and we'll hear from Sharon and Craig with the recommendation of uh, these other these other meetings. Sounds good. Okay. okay, Christine. And I know if you could estimate through the month of August, I know myself is trying to figure Great. out some days. Yeah, yeah and indeed, if you could estimate out as far as you can estimate, that would be great. Thank you. Okay, I guess we should adjourn. Stay well, everybody. Thank you all.